Let's talk Money. about what, what we can expect and to the extent that there are tea leaves to read from these earnings. One of the reasons I think everyone's always so focused on the bank earnings is not just the banks themselves, but what it says about the larger economy. What are you expecting? We're going to see some interesting trends tomorrow. First and foremost, you're going to see net interest revenue growth be very strong for these big lenders because rising interest rates, as you know, have benefited their net interest margin or their spreads. So that's going to be the top line revenue growth for the industry. The cross current to that, however, is we expect them to start building up their loan loss reserves for the anticipation of an economic slowdown next year or recession, which could lead to higher credit costs. And under the new accounting that they all use, which is called CECL, current expected credit loss accounting, they need to start building up those reserves ahead of time. And then third, because these are the big banks reporting tomorrow, we're going to see the capital market revenues. And as we know, the investment banking revenues should be down about 50% year over year. But trading revenues could actually be up maybe about 5% on a year over year basis. So in terms of looking at those loan loss reserves, what are you expecting? Who is going to take the most? And, and how much should we take away from that? It's going to be interesting because this is a new methodology that was put into place in 2020. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it was a very hard read on how it's going to work. So what we should anticipate is that the banks with longer duration assets, such as credit cards, receivables, they will probably build up loan loss reserves more meaningfully than somebody that has shorter duration assets, such as a commercial loan that lasts maybe 12 months. So the longer the duration of the asset, the higher the reserves, because there's a greater likelihood in the longer duration period, you're going to run into a recession. So the consumer lenders should probably be building out their reserves tomorrow stronger than the commercial lenders. If you could own one or two banks into these earnings reports, who do you want to own? And if there's uh, one or two banks that you absolutely have no interest in ever wanting to own <laughs> walking into these earnings, what are those? There you go. Um, what we would say is the right side of the balance sheet is also going to be critical tomorrow. What I mean by that is who's got the best deposit mix? As you know, with rates where they are, good core consumer deposits, consumer checking accounts are not going to see the rates rise very quickly, but high net worth deposits will. So if you can look at regional banks, uh, names like MNT Bancorp or PNC are names to own. They have very strong consumer franchises and very uh, strong loan books as well. And then on staying on the sidelines, I think the capital markets area is still a real struggle. So that means you have to stay on the sidelines with Goldman or Morgan Stanley because we're not out of the woods yet on this investment banking uh, challenge that these companies have faced. And then where do you put the big ones? I mean, I'm thinking of the Bank of America's, the J.P. Morgan's, the Wells Fargo's. Yep, no, good, good question. I would say on the top of the list, Bank of America, since they have an incredibly strong consumer banking franchise in the United States, and the funding costs will benefit them. So you, they would be at the and top of the list. And that'll outweigh any of the capital markets pieces. Exactly, exactly. That, that's the critical part there, absolutely. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.